This week on Maker Update, new tricks for an old game controller, 3D printed muscles, a pocket sized LED cube, and an unbeatable bot. Hey everybody, I'm Donald Bell and welcome back to another Maker Update. In fact, it's the 300th episode of Maker Update, which makes me feel old and proud. Let's go with proud. As luck would have it, we got a great show for you today. Let's get started with the project of the week. Becky Stern wants to give your old broken PS4 controller a new lease on life. Because how tragic is it that this ergonomic configuration of buttons and joysticks are locked into a life of pixel pushing when they could be controlling your next Arduino project? But it's no easy hack to liberate this thing. Every control is wired to the main board through this small flexible membrane that pressure fits against conductive pads. So to break out each function, Becky goes to work creating a whole new PCB intended to fit the same dimensions as the original board. Not only does Becky nail the design, including the pressure fit pads for the membrane cable and even a spot for the built-in speaker, but she's open sourced the whole thing so that you can make your own. Or to make it extra easy, she has very affordably priced boards available through her online store, which you can get with some of the joysticks and buttons to save yourself some desoldering. Once hacked, you can hardwire out all the controls to trigger or manipulate anything you want. Or if you can think small, you can bake the project right into the controller, like Becky is doing for a music project that she's working on. So if you've ever wanted to use an ergonomic game controller like this to control a project, now you've got a surefire way to make it work. I personally don't have a project like that at the moment, but for the price of a board and a used PS4 controller, I might just put this together to have one on hand. Now for some news. Researchers from the Italian Institute of Technology and the Santa Ana School of Advanced Studies have devised a new type of 3D printed pneumatic actuator. They're calling it a grace actuator and they're printed in a soft flexible resin to withstand the wear and tear of inflating and collapsing. Not only does this make it relatively cheap to manufacture, but you also get some design advantages because you can bake the actuators right into a simplified design. This hand, for example, is a single print with all the necessary actuators built into the design. Very cool idea. Now for more projects. Charlene Gonda has a new guide up on Adafruit showing how she created this tiny Wi-Fi connected LED companion cube. The project uses six one-inch high-density dot star LED matrix displays, along with an Adafruit Cutie Pie ESP32 S3 Wi-Fi board, an accelerometer breakout, and a BFF charging board connected to a super tiny rechargeable battery. The frame is 3D printed, which makes it a little fragile, but also easy to repair. The coolest part though, in my opinion, is that you can connect to the cube over Wi-Fi to change out the animations, type a message for it to display, or even draw a shape with your finger. It's a cool project and very well documented. It's a little pricey because of all those LED panels, but still much more affordable than those bigger LED cube projects. For another tiny yet impressive project, Angus from Maker's Muse shares a complete redesign of the ant weight combat robot that he built a few months ago. This time around, it's a lighter lifter type robot with smaller motors, silicone tracks, and this absolutely tiny speed controller board from Botbit. My favorite takeaway from this project is the explanation of how he was able to turn these novelty wristbands into tracks that wouldn't slip off the wheels. It seems counterintuitive, but by bulging out the middle of the wheel, the tracks naturally want to self-center as they rotate. It's a mechanism called a crowned pulley, and it's kind of blowing my mind. Just like the first robot design, Angus includes all of the files and build materials here for you to recreate the robot. It really looks like a great entry point into RC projects or combat robotics. Now for some tips and tools. Last week saw the launch of Full Control XYZ, a site with a growing list of pre-made parametric 3D designs that showcase a very unique print method. Instead of stacking up a 3D print using a series of purely horizontal layers, these designs take the print path in any direction. There's no special 3D printer required. The magic is all in the G code, which you can export directly from the Full Control XYZ website. Some of the designs are just beautiful aesthetically and mathematically, and 
Some are designs that are more of a proof of concept, like this spool design that demonstrates how this technique can be used to create these seemingly impossible overhangs. If it's been a while since your 3D printer felt magical, I'd give one of these designs a try. On his YouTube channel, Zabardas demonstrates some techniques for creating a clean look for wire and cable management, especially when it comes to cosplay projects. Velcro and zip ties are a quick and easy method to get this done, but he also covers braided sleeves, combining sleeves with heat shrink, creating bands of heat shrink, making fabric sleeves, and designing preformed cable runs. On a related note, on Thingiverse, Marl K485 has a collection of 3D printed snap fit DuPont connector sleeves. With these, you can make a single DuPont connection more durable or you can group multiple cables into a more organized ribbon. On Adafruit, Philip Burgess has an epic collection of hacks for cosplayers. It covers way more than you think. Yes, there are tips for designing costumes or buying materials, but there's also a ton of great tips here for cosplayers that are really out in the world, like traveling to cons, improvising costume repairs, taking photos with fans, and even if cosplay isn't your thing, there's some great gems in here on traveling, hotels, self-care, taking great photos, things that could really benefit everybody. For this week's DigiKey Spotlight, check out this short video on converting both metric and imperial measurements. Not only is it a handy refresher, but it's also a reminder that DigiKey has a great online conversion calculator in their resources section. You can use it to convert lengths, but also temperatures, volumes, weights, even decimals to fractions. Dig deeper and you can find DigiKey calculators for wire gauges, pressure, Ohm's law, and more. All right, and that does it for this week's show. Be sure to subscribe, leave a thumbs up, leave a comment. Man, I can't believe it's been 300 shows. That's crazy. Big thanks to DigiKey Electronics for making the whole thing possible. And thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.